Hi and welcome. This is Vince of VincePrep.com discussing the Harvard essay. This is the second in a series about the new HBS essay for the incoming class of 2019. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Those of you applying to start your MBA in 2017 at HBS. So if you watched my previous video, you understood that my method is basically don't start with Harvard. Um, start with Columbia, for example, or Wharton, maybe then Stanford to generate content then you're ready to answer Harvard's question. Harvard's question, as you know, is very broad and very vague. It's kind of like, essentially, in two words, what else do we need to know about you as we evaluate your candidacy? It's very, puts the, it puts the burden very much on you not to try to figure out what they want to hear, but rather figure out what you want to say <laughs> and also align what you need to say with what you think they need to know. In other words, really understanding what it takes to get into the school and understanding the profile and the background that they're really seeking for people that meet their admissions criteria which you can check on their website exactly what their admissions criteria are and they're I think pretty clear about what they're looking for so let me go over to my script um, sorry I don't make perfect eye contact in these videos I try to look um, at the camera but I'm always my eyes are looking around a bit I hope it's not too distracting um, how to start HBS so basically Let's assume that you saw my other video and you liked that advice and you generated contents for Columbia or Wharton. In other words, you clarified your future goal. In the case of Columbia, you've also identified a, a fun fact or as they say, a pleasant surprise that your classmates are going to enjoy, your cluster mates at Columbia are going to enjoy learning about you. So you've got a, in other words, you've got a personal story as well as your professional uh, goals as well as, in Columbia's case, why New York City, which clearly doesn't apply to Harvard, Harvard's in Boston. Um, and also, you've stuck to Stanford as much as you can. The Harvard deadline in round one is quite a bit before, it's two weeks before Stanford. So you're going to submit Harvard before you submit Stanford if you're applying round one, but you want to spend a month, let's say, if you can spare up to a month, to dive into Stanford's famous what matters most to you and why question and inf and follow their advice basically this is this is Stanford's advice to share insights experiences and lessons that shaped your perspectives rather than focusing merely on what you've done or accomplished so they really don't want you just to tell them remind them of how great you are that's your recommenders job right your CV your resume all the small boxes that's where you prove you show rather than tell that you've achieved a lot in your professional career so far. Um, and they also talk about writing from the heart, illustrate how a person, situation, or event has influenced you. So it's what matters most to you and why, but it's not an abstract story. It's a concrete story about a person, a situation, or an event that significantly shaped what matters most to you or even helped you realize what matters most to you. And finally, as they say, the why is more important than the what. I don't think they have a formula to admit 30% of the people who care about X and 30% who care about Y and 30% who care about Z and then the random 10% who care about whatever. Something other than, I ran out of letters there. Anyway, why is more important than what? It's about the deep logic to integrate your past, present, and future. So, let's assume that all that's basically in order. Let's assume that you're at, say, the 80% level with... No, Har Columbia, you may have already sent it if you're applying early. Maybe not. Stanford, you, you put it in the refrigerator. My favorite metaphor for admissions advising, and this comes from my, my, my co-worker, my, actually my boss, my, the chairman of, of my company, has this metaphor about cooking. It's like you're, you're getting all the ingredients ready in the fridge. You know, you're, you're like prepping the meal, if you will. You've got your menu. You know the recipe. You've bought all the ingredients. You've prepped. You've chopped. You've peeled, whatever. Um, things are ready to go. So Stanford, if you will, is in the refrigerator. Not yet cooked, but marinating, let's say, for a week or two as you put it aside and then you focus on Harvard because here comes the Harvard deadline. So what do you do now? Well, first of all, I, I, I encourage you to take stock, take inventory. So if you're going to cook this meal called the Harvard essay, what's in the refrigerator? Um, not only what have you generated for Columbia or maybe Stanford already, but also reverse engineering the Columbia, uh, sorry, the Harvard application is a 15-page PDF document, 15-plus 
15 pages plus a transcript. When you finally submit HBS, you'll get a PDF file back. I know because I see these when I'm doing interview training and it, it contains a lot of information. The essays at the very end, so here's a list of what I saw in PDFs uh, last year anyway, I don't know if it's changed a little bit, but more or less. Personal and family information, employment history, three pages of employment history, every company you've worked at, every role you played, significant uh, accomplishments, significant challenge, uh, intended post MBA goal, very short, 500 characters, Wharton is 500 words, uh, Harvard's 500 characters, you know, that's less than 100 words your education background, your extracurricular activities, any awards and recognition. Recognition, by the way, don't forget media exposure. If you were featured in a magazine or newspaper article or a project that you worked on was highlighted in, not a, not a press release, right? You, you pay for those, but it was picked up in the mass media or even featured on a website or something. Recognition can include media recognition. Not everybody has awards. Here in Asia, awards aren't as common as they are in the States. Test scores, English language ability, the short essays about your English, how often you use it in reading, writing, speaking, additional information. Then there's the recommendations, which they're going to be telling specific stories about your performance, right? They're going to be comparing you to other well-qualified individuals, right? So. What is it that makes you better than your peers? What is it that you do better than anyone else in your peer group? Um, sorry, there's some kids outside. It's, um, do, I like to do this with the windows open. It's after school, so kids are getting home. Sorry about that. Um, um, the most important piece of constructive feedback that your boss has ever given you, right? The circumstances and your response. So in other words, why are you better than everybody else or how are you better than any, everyone else in at least one category? There must be something that you do better than anyone else in your, in your peer group. And also, um, how do you take constructive feedback about important things, not go take a class or learn a little bit more public speaking or get better at Excel or blah, 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 you know, something easy to fix that can be learned in a book or in a you know, five hour seminar something fundamental that's that's like a daily challenge um my wife just told me i need to use more tact i say things really straight sometimes um people used to think i'm from new york city i'm, I'm from the west coast i'm from california but all my life people assumed i was a new yorker just because i'm kind of intense and i sometimes say things very very straight and not very I sometimes don't sugarcoat my words or think diplomatically. I'm not, I would not be a good diplomat. <laughs> um, that would be, and that's, I've heard that before. I've been hearing that since I was a young boy and I know that's a big problem and I'm working on it and I think I'm getting better. Um, but I know I have a long way to go. I don't know if I'd want that in my recommendation letter, but you know, he, he's very honest. He's very direct. He, want, he, he says things out of good intentions, but sometimes his words are simply too sharp for the other person to always absorb or hear. And he doesn't always know how to say the right thing at the right time in the right tone. I know that's true. Um, that would be important feedback. Anyway, this is not about me. It's about you. They're going to see your resume. And then, number 12 on this list. This is my list. I just numbered these, but 12 out of 13, 13 is your transcript, the next to the last thing they're going to read is this short, I think short, one page, two pages, maybe, one and a half, one, one and a half, two, I would say, honestly speaking, max, three pages, and if you format words correctly, the way I think they like to see them on the page with a bit of space to take notes, assuming they print these things out, 1,500 words, I would say. If there was a word limit on the Harvard essay, I'd say 1,500 words is pretty much the top end. And again, I'm, I'm a consultant. I don't work for the school, so that's obviously not an official answer. Let's go to their question. So as we review the application, what more would you like us to know as we consider your candidacy? So candidacy is like your profile. Um, are you admittable? They claim, and I think it's true, 80% of the applicants are admittable you know, their profile, their, their grades, their scores, where they work, what they do, they're admittable candidates, 80%, but as you know, the admit rate is 10% r roughly, right? Only one out of 10, eight out of 10 could be admitted, one out of 10 are admitted. So 
what is it about you that you believe stands out? And also, what do you believe about you isn't already shown on these other 12 items on the uh, out of the 13 that, again, this numbering is mine, not theirs, but, you know, this missing piece. It's like, what's the missing piece? So I'll give you my answer. I'm not applying to Harvard and you're not going to take this from me. For me, it'd be like, why Japan? You know, you, you look at my transcript. I didn't take Japanese. I didn't even take Jap. I took Japanese history, but I think I dropped the class. It was pretty hard. I was American history major. I don't have any obvious signals or, or indicators that I would choose to live now almost 15 years in Tokyo. Um, why have I stayed here this long? Why am I committed to it? What am I doing here? And presumably, if I was going to go get an MBA, I'm too old, but if I was going to go get an executive MBA or something, I'd be coming back here. My family's here. I want to stay here a while longer. What, what, what can't I do here that I must go there to do? That's probably shown in my goal. Um, and maybe my recommender, if, if I'm going back to my company, for example, let's say August was going to send me to Harvard Business School. It's not going to happen. Uh, and come back. My recommender would say, like, we really need him to go figure out whatever it is, online education or digital disruption or how to integrate a X, Y, and Z or how to help us grow or change or evolve or, you know, we ha already dominate the market share. So it's going to have to be either overseas markets or, or down market to younger kids or up market to executives or, you know, uh, executive search or placement or career advising is how are we going to sustain and grow this organization if the org if the company was investing in my MBA to go learn that and figure that out in my essay I would be talking about like yeah why Japan um, how did I get here why have I why have I chosen to stay here and I, I've chosen to stay here through some ugly chapters in this country's history the March 11th tragedy the triple tragedies um, all the questions the lingering questions about safety and radiation and everything else I've chosen to stay here against you know when a lot of my expat or whatever non-Japanese friends simply left um, why am I committed why did I double down and not only on Japan but I went back to my former employer which is again is it's counterintuitive you would think I just would have grown Vince prep and scaled Vince prep I really didn't want to um, so why 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 the choices I've made so they say Answer the question in clear language that those of us who don't know your world. So in this case, the world is, they know Japan, more or less, um, you know, but still, they don't know my world um, and what I do, and they also don't know my personal background. But again, I would keep it short, one page, two pages. In my case, not three pages, I don't think. I would try to make it as short as I could. What do they need to know about me as they consider the candidacy? In my case, it would probably be about my motivations for some unconventional choices I've made that won't be explained by my resume. In fact, they're going to be looking at my resume being like, why, 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 all this moving around, and then, whooms, you know, moving around, moving around, moving around, and then stopping for almost 15 years in one place. I've lived here in Tokyo longer than I've lived anywhere else in my entire life. I come from a sort of family of nomad gypsy people who move around a lot, like many Californians, uh, people, my, my ancestors came from somewhere else in America and then somewhere else in the world before that. Um, anyway, let me stop this video. Um, I hope it's been helpful. I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you subscribe, you'll be the first to know when I've made more videos. I'm about to start a period of travel going to the AGAC conference and then I think hopefully going to the GMAC conference as AGAC and then uh, spending a little bit of time in California with my family um, working while I'm traveling but I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to make more of these videos for the next 10 weeks or so so hopefully this will tide you over I'll make a, some short ones if I can maybe not with video because I won't be in a good place with lighting and, and stuff anyhow signing off for now do subscribe. When I make new videos, you'll be the first to know when they've been made. And best of luck with your applications. Okay, bye for now.